So shout out to my buddy Everett for asking such an awesome question. He said, total noob question, is there a shortcut for dropping a new primitive object to the center being 000? He's talking about the origin. Um, I'm looking for a way to uh, drop a box dead center, then adjusting its shape from there. I know I can just make a box and move it there, but I was hoping there is a one-stop keystroke to make that happen. And uh, I get it, because uh, anybody who's been modeling in Max long enough knows, you know, it's like how quickly can we just get out some geometry. And so I already have something like that, as you see. Uh, I have that on a hotkey for myself. But uh, that's basically what he's looking for, is he wants a quick way to create primitives that he can grab and use on the fly. And so I'm just going to take a quick moment to go over um, a pretty powerful feature inside of 3ds Max. Uh, and so we're going to get into scripting today. And don't get scared. It's easy stuff through what they call... And they've changed a bunch of things in here. But what we're looking for is the macro recorder. This should be F11 on your keyboard by default. And it brings up this little pink and white window. And uh, yours probably won't have anything in it. It'll probably look like this. <clears throat> and uh, the red box up top is the space for recording chunks of what you're doing so if you know anything about Photoshop and creating actions this is kinda like creating actions for 3ds Max uh, it's a little more raw because uh, it uses Max script but basically what you're able to do is to turn on a record button and play around in Max and it'll it'll give you some snippets of the code so I just went up to this macro recorder uh, menu check to enable turn this on and uh, we're recording and so as I it's not gonna record any like viewport movements but it'll record you know if I go to like click this box for example and you see over here you know it's it's already started pulling out code for us and so if I click and drag and start dragging around like that you see that the positions changing over here like the more complex I make my I guess uh, what I'm doing, you see that it starts to expand options within that box uh, information. So if you want to know like all the different kinds of parameters that Max Script has for you know box, you can go on you know online and actually look that up, and you can get a, a list of all available parameters if you want to kind of manually type this in. But this is basically what you're going to have to do. Um, I just did that macro record, and it gave me uh, uh, that box. And basically what this reads is a box it just means create a box it goes into box mode so box position uh, colon open parentheses not, not parentheses but uh, open bracket and then you have your value and I you know I just kinda free did it in the viewport so it reads negative 9 negative 14 0 for the XYZ it's telling me uh, whether or not I want it to be selected so selected is on uh, the width the length and I have all these random values in here and so I'm just going to highlight that, copy it, and go down to this little white window at the bottom, and I'm going to paste. And you can think of this white window down here like you're working, kind of like your working script space. And so I'm going to go and change the height parameter. Start at the end here. I'm going to change it to 64. Just make sure you respect any kind of spaces. You know, like this is code. So Max Max script is pretty loose about its rules but you still want to make sure that if you're editing things in here that you don't want to be deleting any of these brackets and you want to respect that there's commas and spaces in certain places so just be careful with what you're doing here so now you see I have box position I changed the code here I have box position 000, zero and then I have the width the length the height and if I wanted to I could specify segments in here so we'll just go back out into the viewport and change a couple of segments. And you see I get some extra parameters in here as I start messing with these. And you're going to have to start basically copying and pasting things that you want into this line of code. And if you want to test this line of code, I'm going to copy it. Make sure I have it on my clipboard before I 
I don't know, accidentally erase over it or something. <clears throat> but I'm going to go to into that line, and I'm going to do numpad enter. Not the enter in the center of your keyboard, but the enter. Hopefully you're on a keyboard that has the numpad enter. But you're going to hit uh, enter on your numpad, and that will run that code. And you see it gave us a box out here. And because I didn't specify length, width, and height segment values, it used the last box's default, like whatever we left it at. And so that would be a good thing to go in and change before we turn this into a final script. So we're just going to erase that kind of feedback that it gave us. It basically told us that it successfully created a box and it named it for us, box 001. There's our output. So it's like max script output, basically. I'm going to erase that. Go back up to my line of code. And uh, we're just going to go back to the freeform create box because I just want to see the code. Of, I just want to see the code when I drag this out. Like that. Let's see if I change my segments here. Yep, see it adds it on to the end of that line because we're still kind of active in the box tool, if that makes sense. So as I change these parameters, it's lengthening that line of code for us. And we're just going to use that same format. So I'm going to copy that. Well, actually, I don't even need to copy the whole thing. I'm just going to copy this of length segs, width segs, height segs. We're going to copy that. And just do a space and paste it on the end of our line of code here. And change it to the values we want, which in our case, we want one on all these. We just want a basic cube. Whoops. Yeah, we just want a basic cube to spawn at the origin. So there's our code, right? So we're going to take that, copy it to clipboard, make sure we don't mess it up. And then I'm going to go to the end of that line right there in that white box and hit enter. And it looks like it did it, but I'm just going to delete everything in here and run it again. If you want to clear what you have in the white window here or in the red one, red or paint, whatever you want to call it, Control D will clear it, so you can clear out all of that stuff. Go back down to my white one, paste from my clipboard, because you know we have that thought ahead. And I'm going to hit Enter on my keyboard, and that seems to work for us. That does what we want it to do. And so this is the first part of you know what I showed you here is just to kind of take a look under the hood at what Max is doing in terms of its script you can enable that and take a look at it for you know if you're out there modeling and you want to know how you know what max uh, or you know uh, what am I trying to say if you're in the edible poly tools and you want to know the max script for like maybe the cut tool or the target weld tool all you have to do is go in here turn on macro recorder enable it and then go about your business and you'll start to see the script pop up in here if you want to begin trying to cut and paste your own scripts together uh, that's how I got into scripting. I've been doing this for about, I don't know, six, seven years at this point. And uh, I don't use it all the time. I don't pour tons of time into learning Mac script, but knowing little things like this helps. Like, for example, you know, when you realize because you're a modeler that you create hundreds of boxes a day because you're just pulling out, you know, same basic geometry that you really are tired of digging for the box tool and dragging it out and moving it where you want to move it. So you just want to create a little one-liner code and save a script, you know, start building your own little scripts. And it just kind of built up from there. You know, start learning more things like how to do if-then loops, but I'll save that for another video. It, you know, it's like, like programming, like code. You just uh, start stringing things together with and statements, uh, and statements and if-then loops and yada, 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 yada. So, to turn this into a function, like a functional script file, like to save it and take it from computer to computer, we're just going to highlight that one line of code that we have, and we're going to drag it, that is drag that text like it's a file, over onto your toolbar, any toolbar, doesn't really matter, just drop it somewhere. And uh, that's Max's quick function to kind of create a macro script. And that did a couple of things when it created that button. Uh, one, it created a button for us, but it also put a temporary macro file on your computer somewhere. And uh, 
you can clean that up later but basically we go right click on this button edit macro script and you see that this script and it tells you where it's saved which is under JJB working deploy max macros and they called it a generic drag and drop macro 12 and so uh, along with that creating that file for us you see within this script we now have uh, like the name of the script you have to have macro script in here that little whoops I'm messing things up you have to have macro script in here this is the name of the tool so I know I can go ahead and change this and I like to do I kinda have a system already set up so I do my last name underscore I would call this something like quick I don't know quick box underscore demo in my case because I already have a quick box and then I go to the category and the category uh, you guys have kind of seen it if we go to customize customize user interface and we're going pulling things out of toolbars you see I even have some old scripts in here too but all these categories in here I have a bigly category and it'll group them like this so if you want to make a bunch of your own tools and you want them all to show up in the same place in 3ds max that's what this category is in here inside of this macro script so I'm going to change that to bigly you can give tooltip I don't like tooltips I'm going to leave that off it's like a little description and then there's my code and so I would say file save as because we don't want it to be the drag and drop macro 12 generic name we actually want to go and I'll probably just replace that drag and drop file. I'll go and rename it. You see I already have a bunch of old ones in here that I haven't cleaned up. But I'm just going to change the name of this one. So we'll call it bigly underscore, you know, keep the same naming convention. Quick box underscore demo. And I'll save that. And I'm going to click it, save over it, yes. And then while we're in this uh, edit script window, I'm just going to hit control E to evaluate the script, which will just kind of reconfirm that it's running in 3ds Max. Make sure all the code's validated and it can run on command when you run the tool. <clears throat> kind of loads it into Max's uh, RAM, if you will. And we're going to close that, close that delete that and uh, this button on the side it's still actually if we go edit macro script see it says it no longer exists because I renamed that whole thing so we can actually just delete that button now delete that button yes and now we have to go back, back to our customize toolbars and it should be in here There it is, quick box demo. And I can drag this out, this new one, named properly and everything, out onto the toolbar. And now when I click that button, boom, I got a box. Remove that box. Click that button again, I got another box. Real fast. Uh, I set these to hotkeys. I like them on uh, my numbers. Like if I'm in, you know, like a first person shooter, I might have my weapons on numbers, I have my boxes and my primitives on my numbers. And so I can launch those real fast. And, uh, you know, don't stop here. You can go in and create a uh, quick cylinder, quick sphere, like I have. I have one for sphere, plane, end gun, mm, cylinder. I have a box collision one, which basically just reads the bounding box for an object and creates a box at that bounding box. That was fun. Uh, and don't forget, you can also right-click on that little tool toolbar and chain, you know, edit the button appearance. I don't know, browse to. Let's see here. Should be like a standard category that has like a box picture on it. Standard. There it is. Box. Say okay. So now I have that. It has a little, you know, has an icon for it now, real quick to identify. And then after you have that, don't forget to save your UI. File save as, not file save as, but customize save UI. 
and then save your toolbars or your hotkeys or whatever it is. And that's kind of how you create your first script. And specifically to Everett, you know, that's how you create your quick primitives, as I call them. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, you know, thanks for asking such an awesome question. I thought this was, you know, I wanted a, a video on my YouTube to kind of break into the topic of scripting and, and go figure Everett would be the one to be asking the right questions. Thanks, man. Hope the rest of you enjoy. Peace out.